<laughs> and this screen is turned off, so I have nothing to look at. This is awesome. Tonight, we're gonna do some tracking to tape. In the good old Fostex R8. We've done some testing, it sounds pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is write a bunch of short-ish songs. See what we can create, and we're gonna track to the Fostex. I've got an idea, he has no idea what it is. We're gonna track everything to the tape. We'll walk through a bunch of the setup and stuff too, but our plan is just to have fun recording to the Fostex. You ready to do it? Sure. Let's get to it. Let's take a quick look at how we get sound from the console to the tape machine and back to the console. The bus section of the Trident perfectly set up for this. We take our direct outs of bus one through eight, those are patched over into the inputs of the tape machine. The outputs of the tape machine come back up here on the monitor returns. So our sends to tape are the faders and all our monitoring volumes and panning are up here on the monitor section. We use our auxes here to send headphone mixes or effects, you know, reverb, delay, anything you might want to hear while tracking. All done here on the aux section. This session has four tracks of drums, a track of bass, and three tracks of guitars. The drums, we usually leave the kick and the snare on their own buses to give us some wiggle room when mixing. All the other drums are sent to a stereo send to tape. So the overheads, the rooms, and the toms are all pre-mixed and sent directly to tape. Bass is on its own channel, and we usually leave the guitars on their own, unless we're gonna do any ping-ponging or you know bouncing down of tracks. But in this case, we're trying to keep everything just eight tracks, so mixing is simple. And when we go to mix, I'll pull everything up on eight regular channels of the console so I can then use my bus sections for any grouping. You know, maybe grouping all the drums together for some bus processing or grouping the guitars together, that sort of thing. And that's pretty much the setup. It's time to get to the good stuff, and that's the instruments. We're gonna start with drums, we'll take a look at the, the drum setup, our mic setup, and a little bit of the tracking, and then we'll come back and have a listen. You want, you want more of, of, of the rooms uh, uh, blended in in there? Yeah, see, uh, see if you can bring some more of that up so it has a, an effect on everything. Okay. Let's, let's just do a pass. I literally had no idea how I was going to get out of that. I, I thought I had an idea in my head and I couldn't remember it. We'll work backwards from the rooms. Oh, the Audio Technica 4080 ribbon mics. We've got a single mic out here in front of this gigantic 26 inch kick drum. And this is the Roswell Pro Audio Mini, Mini K47 KD. I have it angled kind of going across so I'm not pushing a ton of air. I wanted it in the center, but I didn't want to push all that air coming out of this kick right into the diaphragm and we just kind of moved it around until we got a sound we liked, and we dug that. S25's on the toms. You can see over there, there's an SM57 on the snare, just a regular SM57 on the snare, and a pair of Roswell Pro Audio Mini K47 X's on the overhead, and they sound rocking. Really nice cymbal sound. And speaking of cymbals, all Pisces, 2002, Ride 22, and I'm pretty sure, okay, yep, 602, and 602 ME, shocker. And the 15 inch 602 ME hats. So the kit, the big old Ludwig Classic Maples. And we went big this time. 26 inch kick, 13, 16, and the eight by 14 Classic Maple snare. And as you can see, there's moon gel everywhere. So let's take a look at our final drum mix and then we'll have a listen. We have our four tracks of drums, kick, snare, and then our stereo track with the overheads, the toms, and the rooms, all feeding a stereo bus. This drum bus has the Rupert Neve 551 EQ feeding into the Rupert Neve 535 compressor. Not doing a lot, just a little bit of sweetening. The kick, 
has some A range, the 500 A range EQ, and that's going to the SSL compressor. Then the snare has the Kush Electra, and that's feeding the IGS tube core compressor. And there is a little bit of parallel compression for the kick and the snare, and that's the good old dynamites. And the last thing on these drums, besides the tape itself, is a little bit of the SPX90 reverb just on the kick and the snare. So let's take a listen to just what our final drum mix turned out. I don't, I think it's going to be too squishy. Maybe use a different distortion. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, what do you want to do, use? Uh, we can try something a little, a little uh, uh, sharper. Um, Jesus, you can even try the, the, the EVH. Just put a very little gain, a little cut. That's kind of cool. Want to see what it sounds like? Sure. All right, I'm gonna let Ernesto tell you what we chose to use because actually he's the one that chose what to use. So, <laughs> you're up. Okay, so we went uh, straight in with the DI and... Yeah, into the heritage. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever was coming out was like, eh, this is a little too round, you know? I needed something a little sharper, so... Yeah, it didn't sound bad. No. It just didn't have yeah, it was, uh, bite. We, yeah, we want a little bite, you know, so that it was a little exciting. So, well, guess what? EVH came to the rescue, and I added a little bit of gain, and then suddenly the bass was cutting. It was like, all right, this works. And that was that. And it yeah. came out nice. And then the bass was the... It was just the jazz bass, right? Yeah, it yep. was just jazz bass, yeah. Just Fender jazz bass, yeah. We took the bass, and it's going to the DIY RE 15 ips I know, we're tracking the tape, going to a tape emulator. However, the cool thing about the 15 ips when you turn it literally all the way on, it adds a killer grit. And we thought that it helped pull more of that grit from the EVH out, but still round it off a little bit. So we dug that. That is feeding... See if I can, I can't get it, this out, it's still hooked up. Oh, you can kind of see it. That is actually going to the Behringer, oh, I unplugged it, Ultra Chorus, just adding a little bit of color to the bass sound. Then there's some parallel compression from the Golden Age Comp 3A Junior. That is actually getting fed to the parallel from a molt over in the patch bay. So it's coming straight out of the tape machine, going to the molt in the patch bay, and then one is feeding our main channel here on 21, and then the other is feeding the parallel. So with that said, let's hear what the bass sounds like. I get this in, 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 in 
one take. It's way too, way too, uh, um, I mean, not one take, like right away. It's gonna take a, a little bit because it's, uh, it's pretty, well, you're pretty close. Busy. Well, pretty that's busy. we can always do a punch. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't tried that. Yet. Exactly. So we'll try it on a live stream in front of everybody. <laughs> we don't even know how to use it all. Sounds like a little tube. That's cool. Look at those mini tubes, man. They're like, <laughs> like, like really, really tiny. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, not bad. Pretty cool. Not many guitar players will let the drummer dictate what the amp is. <laughs> but he had no idea that I was bringing in that little Z fast. <laughs> but I'd say uh, the tone you dialed yeah. in a really cool tone. Yeah. So, well, there was not too much to dial in. I mean, it was just a knob, <laughs> either turn it all the way up or or somewhere in the middle. But there were switches. But, yeah, I think there was some some mid range or high end enhancement switches. So I think I turned everything on. And I was feeding the the four by twelve Marshall, and I think just a couple of speakers <laughs> were running because you know it's three hundred watts <laughs> from one watt. <laughs> and just a single Audio Technica forty eighty one. That was yeah. the only, and that was the. You didn't, there was no pedals. You were straight into the tie lines, into the... Yeah. So the rhythm guitars are going to the Trident high-low filters, and then that is feeding a pair of Golden Age Comp 54s, and they're not really compressing much. They're just doing a little to help kind of even things out, but I love the mid-range of those on guitar. So we'll take the rhythm guitars first, right? Yes. All right, rhythms. Here we go. One thing we forgot to mention is there is a little bit of reverb coming from a good old vintage Alesis MIDI Verb 2. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you let me turn that on either. But it, <laughs> but it worked out just, to, it's a cool vibe. I love that on guitars. And that was our, that's our rhythm sound. But the fun stuff yes. was the melody. Yes, the melody was, yeah. It was basically two sounds on the yes. melody. The first sound was just the same Zvex, and then I used the good old Phase 90, which was modded with two, clipping two uh, resistors, and yeah, it sounds very close to the to the original script logo. Here, hold that, here. What is this? <laughs> yeah, this guy. And it's cool. It's yeah. It it adds. Oh, and I had the the knob turned, you know, past 12 o'clock, so it added like a vibrato effect, more interesting. So a cheap way to imitate the vibrato pedal. And this is my favorite though. Yeah, and then for the B section melody, when it, it goes uh, slower or half time feel, oh, then we use this Boss synth pedal. So it turns your guitar into all kinds of 
synth sounds with some sequencing, make it sound like an organ. And I think that's what I used with a little organ uh, like tail. So you hit a note and then you hear like an or organ tail behind it. It was, it was great. It's like, oh, this is, this is gonna work. Here is all our guitars. And that's our setup. Yeah, that's everything. I am so excited to be doing this. I love how it keeps you in the moment. You know, there's no keyboard here, there's no monitor on. This is just awesome. Yeah, nothing wait. to look at, right? So we basically have to listen to the speakers. <laughs> I know, weird. You have to listen to the music. <laughs> Let's take a listen to the entire mix. Thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you in the next one.